So when you start registering your OAuth 2 or OpenID Connect application with any major provider, you will probably go through some sort of uh, yeah, API management dashboard. For example, here I took a screenshot from the Google platform. Yeah, so you have to say, okay, how does my OAuth screen look like? What is the logo of, like what logo do I want to display? What text do I want to display? Maybe also some localized version. So all of this is typically manual work. However, there is actually a way on how to make this registration dynamically or programmatically. And this is exactly what we're going to talk about today. So today we're going to talk about uh, dynamic client registration, which is RFC 7591. And uh, yeah, doing that can have quite some advantages in some cases. So for example, typically an application, if you load it like from the App Store, is like a public client. Why? Because you cannot package any secret or client credentials in the package itself because otherwise people could just look at it and, and just extract it. However, there is a way on how to make a mobile app a confidential client and that is by dynamically registering the uh, uh, itself when you start it. Yeah? So instead of shipping like some client credentials in the package you download from the app store, when you open the app, uh, the application is just reaching out to the authorization server is so to say programmatically filling out like this entire form here and then it's registering itself and then it could actually receive like a client secret or any credentials that are required and uh, mobile operating systems like ios and android they have native support for securely storing client credentials so that is a way on how to make like a mobile app actually a confidential client Another thing which you might do, uh, which is also recently gaining some traction, is uh, this whole idea of open banking and of dynamically registering authorization service. Yeah, so for example, suppose you are like a, some startup and your startup is aggregating or is like facilitating the finances for your customers. Yeah, so you have like some server and the server connects to a hell of a lot of different banks and uh, it aggregates like all the transactions and so on and, and shows you like some unified view. Yeah, so that would be a great example where you could use this dynamic client registration simply because you have so many banks like to manage, it would be like really painful <laughs> to fill everything out manually. And you could, for example, do this in the build step. Yeah, so you might have like some file where it says, okay, here are the banks that I support. And if you see, oh, I haven't registered it, then you, just do like this dynamic client registration and then in the end it aggregates all your transactions from all banks and then it says okay you totally spent five dollars this month so you can do this in the build step you could theoretically also register it lazily right so if someone says yeah i want to use this bank and you realize oh uh, actually i haven't registered like the application with this particular bank well you could just do it in the background that would also work Maybe it makes more sense to do it during the build step because, uh, yeah, then you might like see problems up front because if there's like any issue with the client registration, then, well, your customer is like not going to see anything. Yeah, and overall, how does this work? Well, it's actually pretty simple. So uh, either the client, so that means the, the mobile app, for example, or the developer is like uh, hitting like some specific endpoint it's like the client registration endpoint in the authorization server. So obviously the authorization server has to support uh, the spec. And there you send all the things programmatically that you would normally enter in this API management dashboard. Yeah, so what is the redirect URL? What are the redirect URLs? Uh, what grant types do I support? Uh, what is the name of the application? Uh, what scopes do I have? And so on and so on. So it's like a huge list. I didn't show like everything in here because it, it would be like very long. But if you want to know the details, you can uh, check out like this RFC here and can read through everything. Everything So here you can see like all the uh, things that you can register. Yeah, and there's a few things that are worth mentioning. So for one in this uh, specification, it says, well, you the authorization server might support some sort of initial access token because obviously what you don't want is you don't want anyone to just register like an application uh, with you or to like spam you 
And uh, yeah, that is why um, you might make use of, of some sort of initial access token. So this is something that you have to obtain by other means. So the spec does not say how to obtain it, which kind of makes it again a manual step. So that's why they recommend that you should at least offer to the client or to the developer that you don't need this initial access token. However, what you might need is a software statement. So a software statement is a JSON web signature token. So something that is like signed and uh, it contains all these uh, yeah, key value pairs here as claims. And if the uh, authorization server trusts the entity that has issued like the software statement, now obviously the requirement is that the issuer is specified in a statement and the signature like validates, then it's going to uh, only take or it's, it's going to prefer the values that are written in here because this is so to say confirmed by a third party entity. Yeah, so overall like this whole client registration helps you to or would helps you to build these API dashboards, right? Because in the end, this is exactly what this thing is doing. Yeah, so you enter some data, you click some button, and then it makes like some call to the authorization server and registers it. So it helps you to build these things. In principle, you could also make like an application, a confidential client by dynamically registering it. That would also work. And of course, if you're dealing with a lot of different um, like authorization servers, then client uh, or dynamic client registration is essential for, uh, for you to not go crazy because otherwise you're just gonna have too much bureaucracy to support all of this cool yeah so that's it pretty much i hope this explanation makes sense if you have any questions please let me know if you liked the video please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel and i'll see you in the next one bye bye